Uh, hello, my name is Vsel Klinsky. I'm a PhD student at the University of Utah. Today, I'm going to talk about YARPGen, a compiler father for loop optimizations and data parallel languages. It was developed by me, Dmitry Baboki, and John Regeer. Using it, we were able to find 120 bucks in LVM, GCC, ISPC, DPC++, SDE, and Alive 2. 40% of those bugs are miscompilations. They are unrelated to the bugs that we reported in our OOPSL 2020 paper. There are several features that make CRGEN so effective. Uh, we wanted it to be able to detect wrong code bugs in loop optimizations and data parallel languages derived from C. It also comes with an automated testing system which makes it easy to use. <clears throat> Before we talk about each of these features in detail, let me give you a quick background overview. Uh, the main idea of random testing is to automatically produce a large number of tests and use it to detect bugs. There are two main approaches to fuzzing, uh, generative and mutation-based one. The first one does not require any external input. For every new seed, it produces a new test out of thin air. Mutation-based fuzzing, on the other hand, requires an input corpus. It produces new tests by altering con the content of existing ones. We implemented Yargen as a generative father because it aligned better with our goals, and now we'll talk about how we achieve them. Uh, first of all, we will discuss what do we do to detect miscompilation bugs. Uh, CFML languages are infamous for their undefined behavior. For example, let's take a look at the code snippet on the left. Uh, Intel C++ compiler and Clang return two different values for it. At the first glance, it might look that one of them is wrong, but it turns out they're both correct. This program contains undefined behavior. <clears throat> uh, in this case, compiler can do whatever it wants. Uh, the expression involves several reads from and writes to the same variable, and their order is not defined. Therefore, if test contains undefined behavior, uh, its result uh, is undetermined and useless. To avoid that, we developed an elimination behavior mechanism. Uh, it is completely static and happens and works during the generation step. We do not use any wrapper functions. It is based on concrete value tracking and simple rewrite rules. First, we'll talk about how do we, um, how do we make sure that all produced operations are safe. During the generation process, Yargen tracks values of all the variables in the program, and then it uses simple uh, interpreter to predict results of the operations and detect and define behavior. If we detect undefined behavior, we replace the faulty operation with a safe one. For example, in this case, we replaced signed, uh, we replaced addition, which caused signed overflow, with a subtraction. This is a high-level overview of this idea, and you can find uh, more details in our OOPSL 2020 paper. We use the same uh, mechanism to, to eliminate undefined, undefined behavior in loops. Uh, to do it, we validate only one iteration of the loop, and then make sure that loop operates on, operates on exactly the same values. We separate output variables from the input ones, so the input variables do not change their values. It can be seen as if we take a scalar code and drop it in a loop. The information that loop operates on the same input um, values is concealed in a separate compilation model, so a compiler has to reason about the general case. This allows us to reuse exist an existing undefined behavior elimination mechanism with minimal modifications. Uh, we are working on extension that lifts these limitations and allows us to use multiple values within the same body, but that's a work in progress. In any case, YARPGEN produces tests that are guaranteed to comply with language standard. Uh, next, we will talk about how we target uh, loop optimizations explicitly. Uh, this way we can make, we can ensure that optimizations that were that we are interested in fire often enough. Uh, it is necessary because we cannot test optimizations that we cannot trigger. We refer to the collection of the techniques that allows us to do it as generation policies. They can be expressed in a very different manner. Uh, sometimes they are implemented in the form of IR elements, uh, such as loop nests or stencils. Uh, this way, we can make synchronized decisions about large structural elements of the test. 
Sometimes they are implemented as explicit mechanisms in fuzzer. For example, we use common expression buffer to make sure that generated tests contain enough of them. Sometimes they come in form of altered probability. Uh, depending on the, context, on the context, we can artificially change them to produce code with required properties. Uh, the overall goal of the generation policies is to produce code that is likely to satisfy optimization prerequisites and trigger them. Our relation shows that they help us to find rare bugs. Uh, now it's time to take a closer look at two loop-specific generation policies. Uh, let's say that we want to trigger loop fusion. To do that, we need two consecutive loops with exactly the same iteration space and no dependencies. The odds of getting um, the structure is quite low because uh, there are so many choices the fuzzer can make. So if we rely on purely random generation, this case is unlikely to happen. That's why we introduced loop sequence statement to make synchronized decision like same iteration space between large uh, structural elements of the fuzzer, of the test. <clears throat> Another example of loop-specific generation policies is explicit support of stencils. Uh, it is motivated by the idea that real-world applications often operate on, uh, often use uh, well-known array access patterns, and stencil is one of them. Its uh, signature feature is multiple use of elements from the same array within a small region. Uh, compilers are designed to recognize and optimize it. Uh, for example, in this case, JVN propagates array elements between iterations to minimize the number of loads. So a naive case would require three loads, while optimized version contains only one. We implemented stencils as patterns, uh, which means that when YARPGEN creates them, uh, it randomly chooses its, its properties, such as used arrays, its uh, affected dimensions, and stride. Next, we'll discuss how to support multiple C family languages. When we discuss algorithms, we usually use high-level abstractions. Uh, for example, when I say matrix multiplication, you probably think about the mathematical definition of it and know how it's implemented in C++ or ASPC. These two code snippets look very different, but they perform the same task. Uh, this is how humans think about writing the code, and Yergen tries to mimic it. We separate the test essence from its form, and we construct tests in the high-level layer. Then we lower it to the concrete syntaxes of the target language. Uh, we can do it because uh, the rules for undefined behavior in C family languages are quite similar. Our high-level layer is mostly language agnostic and captures the information that is shared between multiple languages. Another aspect of multiple language support especially for emerging languages, is support of multiple testing oracles. The first one is differential testing. testing. It works best in a case when multiple compilers for the same languages are available. It detects errors by uh, comparing results of the, of the execution between them. When only a single implementation is available, Yergen is able to provide the correct answer for the test. We support both of these modes because only differential testing is compatible with modern test reduction tools, such as CReduce. Uh, and the last feature that I want to talk about is usability. Yargen can be used as a standalone tool that produces thousands of, tests, thousands of tests. But if you do not want to implement your own random testing system, you can use the one that we provide. It automatically generates tests, compiles them, detects compiler crashes, executes produced binaries, and uses test oracle to detect miscompilation bugs. It can also use CReduce and bug classification subsyst subsystem to provide a minimal producer for every new error it detects. Uh, unfortunately, Yergen has some limitations. Uh, some of them, for example, a lack of floating point support, are open research questions. Others, like a uh, lack of dynamic relocations, are caused by limited engineering resources. And now it's time to talk about the results. Uh, as I said, in total we were able to report 120 bugs in different compilers and other tools. This slide shows the distribution uh, of reported bugs by kind. Uh, you might ask why there are so few wrong code errors in LVM compared to GCC. 
One reason for that is that LM has more asserts, which helps is to catch bugs earlier. Another reason is that we didn't want to flood bug tracker with too many open issues, so unfixed wrong code bugs prevented us from submitting more. Uh, unfortunately, this is still remains a problem as of now. Uh, this slide shows in which compiler components we were able to detect bugs. As you can see, most of them were detected in uh, target-specific optimizations and various optimizing components of the compiler. And this is exactly what we wanted. Um, most of the reported bugs were fixed. LM fixed 70% of them, while GC managed to fix 95 and assign the rest. Uh, here you can see a raw and reduced output film from Yergen. It looks big, complicated, and scary, but modern test reduction tools do a pretty good job. So uh, reproducers that we submit usually do not accept a couple dozen lines of code. For example, here you can see the meaningful part of the reproducers that we submitted for LM, which was uh, miscompiled for uh, Skylake server architecture. The correct answer for this code snippet is one, while the optimized version returned zero. This project is open sourced and available online. Uh, some of the generation policies that we developed are not in the trunk yet, but uh, we are working on porting them to the trunk and they will land there in a month or two. If you use it, please let us know if it helps you to find bugs. Uh, it keeps us motivated and helps us to publish papers. Uh, speaking about papers, we have one that goes into more details of the talk in the submission right now, so it is available upon request. Uh, in addition, if you're working on loop optimization and um, think that it might benefit from fuzzing, please let us know. We can include it in our daily testing. I would like to thank Intel for partially sponsoring this research and all, all LLVM developers who fix bugs that we submit. Uh, before we transition to the Q&A session, I have one quick note. I'm expected to graduate the ed at the end of the upcoming spring, so if you think that this project is relevant for your team or you have open positions, please let me know. You can download my CV from my personal website and reach out to me using this email. And now it's time for me to answer your questions. Thank you. So you have essentially an interpreter of your own IR. Yes, which helps us, which uh, we use to predict operations and detect uh, and detect uh, undefined behavior while so we generate. I can see how it allows you to detect, for example, integer overflow. Yes. How does it help you detect this example on your first slide with I plus 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 I? Uh, so we do not, uh, some of the features are avoided by construction, like we do not have pointer arithmetic, so we don't need to deal with that. Uh, so we do not support um, the increment operations, but some of the undefined behavior like uh, loop array, access of array accesses um, are avoided by construction. So we know the iteration space, we know the size of the array, so we can avoid mm -hmm. accessing um, like unallocated memory or memory that does not belong to the array. So like this feature is avoided by construction, we just do not generate it. Um, yeah. Since there is no one in the line, can you tell more about the five uh, miscompiles on LVM that uh, fixed, not fixed, what's the state? Uh, I do not have um, the status of them, but if you go to the website um, of the project um, on GitHub, uh, there is a bugs.rst file which tracks all the bugs that we submitted and you can check it there. Okay, um, any other questions or is this it? Um, thanks for the talk. Uh, 
Uh, I want to ask for the C code that you generated. Have you ever tried to cross compile it to other backend, uh, other architectures? Um, we did not try to to compile it for other architectures, but we know that this approach also works on ARM because we are testing uh, like M1 chip uh, right now. But yes, that's a good idea. So you can like compile on one architecture and then port the test to the other one, and that should work. All right. Thanks. Hi. Uh, thanks for your talk. Were you able to find any bugs that were not related to loop optimizations that you previously knew about that you added as first class features to your IR? Um, so when you add new features, you see a spike in the bug, like in the number of fine bugs. So when I added stencil, I was able to find um, a couple bugs in GCC that did not require loops, but they relied on stencils. A comment after spending 10 seconds on the uh, bugs.rst. Mm -hmm. uh, it would really help to separate uh, compilation failures and assertions and okay. miscompiles. They're very different classes of bugs uh, with respect to social issues in mm -hmm. the community. When you produce a bizarre code and the compiler crashes, this is, this is not okay, but this is much more okay than if compiler miscompiles. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I would love to track those things separately. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. So you just mentioned that uh, when you add a new feature, you get a spike in failure. So I think a lot of the benefit that you're talking about here is, is in having an extensible framework. So can you talk about the implementation effort to add a new feature? It depends on the features. So, um, like they are implemented in, they're mostly implemented in like uh, three different ways, as I talked, as I said. Um, and um, if it's something that requires just restricting probabilities, for example, uh, vectorizable loops has a very limited subset of operations that they can support. They do not support uh, unexpected exits. So this can be achieved if you just reduce the number of features that you. Um, Generate a loop, and loop can become vectorizable. But for example, stencil requires a more is more involving because you need to make synchronized decision about okay, we need to generate like this pattern which will exist as a, like as an explicit element in the AR. So uh, the answer is depends on the feature. Sometimes uh, it's just like um, go there, detect that okay, this probability should be disabled, and it can be done in like in an hour. Others require like a couple of days of work, for example, stencil or uh, like loop nest uh, was designed from the start. So it might be really involving to add something like that on top. On this slide, when you uh, decide to vectorize the loops, what are the guidelines you use to generate vectorizable loops? Um, sir, can you read the question, please? For here, you show like the skewed yes. probability. There is a vectorizable loop. Yes. What are the guidelines you use to generate the vectorizable loop? Um, so we like I went to the Clunk optimization requirements, and like there is a list that says you can't have unexpected loops, you, you unexpected exits. You cannot have this. Um, like you can't expect. You can't use user-defined functions and so on. So I went to the father and made sure that. Uh, when we want to generate recognizable loops, the loop satisfies the guidelines for authorization in Clang. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. So with no more questions, we can end like five minutes early. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>